All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another edition of Shabbat Lounge. This is Matt. And Jake here. And we are coming to you with another Torah portion. Right. So if you're following along, you should be at Shalak. Which send is, you. Send you, right. So this is Numbers chapter 13 through chapter 15. So. And this is our just high look at uh, the Torah portions. Give you a quick overview of some highlights and uh, encourage you to go read it for yourselves and see if maybe you can pull out some good messages for yourself. That's right. And we certainly don't claim to have all the answers or to be an expert here. Uh, we we are just students, uh, Bereans of the word like you are as well. And we hope that you're searching the scriptures daily and trying to see the gems in here that uh, Yahuwah has put before us. Right. So we find great value in studying the Torah. If you've never listened to us before, we find that um, by studying Torah, we find what our father likes, what he doesn't like, and how to please him. Right. And because um, we want to be uh, being becoming more like Yeshua. And so uh, let's figure out what he knew. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And we're not doing this because we're trying to earn our salvation through works. That's not what this is about, but this is trying to please our Father and uh, do our part to to be, you know, just do the things He wanted us to do. Right. So here we are. So thank you for being with us, and hopefully you're in a, a, a um, some kind of Sabbath group where you go through the Torah portions and read them and study them and have a chance to talk about it because we think it's super important to. Uh, to fellowship with other believers who are like-minded. And if you don't have a place, uh, go to find the, to the fellowship finder, which you can find on our website. You can also find it on Psalm 119 ministries. You can Google Sabbath lounge for more information, but uh, you can find other like-minded people all around the world. Correct. So, and anyway. so, uh, yeah. And while you're at it, hit that like and subscribe button and, uh, you'll get notifications that a new episode has popped up whenever that happens. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So a little context from last week and in numbers 11, the people demanded to eat meat. Did they eat meat, Jake? They ate so much meat that they became sick of the meat because, yes. uh, Yah had brought a bevy of quails to them. Mm -hmm. And then chapter 12, there's an attempted coup. And then chapter 13, where we find ourselves tonight, or today, Yahweh is testing them. Right. And so uh, we, we may have uh, gleaned over the attempted coup rather quickly in the last one, but basically Miriam and Aaron are a little upset with how things are, how Moses is doing things. Miriam gets kicked out of the camp, and then they have to hang out there till she's ready to come back in the camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely, you know, attempted coup, but definitely questioning authority. Yeah. Um, you know, um, and uh, yeah, she had to deal with some consequence for her actions right. from that. So, and here we are, we're, you know, ab about one year has passed of wandering around the desert. And so according to, and so we've got to go back to the wedding here a minute, Jake. And so according to the wedding model, you know, the bride and groom had one year where they didn't have to go to war. Right. And so like a year with each other, and that's what this represents. And now that year is over, and guess what? It's time to go to war. Time for that husband to, to do his duty. Yep. And so, I, you know, I think Scripture is clear uh, that this is a test for the people. And let's see, this is the Scripture here that talks about what they were to do. All right, so... And see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. And what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. And be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first, first ripe grapes." And Jake, I don't think it's too much of a stretch here in verse 20 to say, hey, he's basically saying, be bold and courageous 
when you take those grapes out of that land <laughs> right. because you're taking someone else's grapes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just a side note. Yeah. Uh, somebody else has produced these grapes and you're you're leaving with them. So you had to have some boldness to do that. Yeah. And I think uh, looking forward, he's like, once you see these grapes, you're going to realize why I said that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get it. All right, so what does he even do this? So, Jake, how could this be like a test? Well, you see, Yahweh didn't know what was in the land, so he needed people to go in there oh, with their people eyes and tell them. Did he? And, and, you know, ask the who, what, where, when, why, how, I and get so. all the deets. Yeah, I don't think so. That's not it? <laughs> so, so, clearly, y'all, he knew who was there. He knew uh, he could see all this happening, and he knew exactly what they were going to find. And uh, this wasn't about him. It was about the people. Right. And he wanted it to me. It's kind of like a check to see where are their hearts really. So he, can, he had an idea and he's like, well, this this will this will tell me uh, where they are. Yeah. And I, I kind of think this is uh, blown out in a lot of Yah's discussions with Moses and Abraham. You see them asking him questions and Yahweh appears to quote unquote change his mind uh that kind of thing but he knew how it was going to go ahead of time he already knows how it's going to go so when i see things like that i i look at it as a test to the person he's talking with or the person he's directing to do something Mm -hmm. it's i know this is how it is but when i ask you this you'll have to search your heart and figure out if that's what you really think yeah Uh, so yeah it's a test for them and what do they find out that they're what what do they find out in this test well we'll see that in just a second okay the last thing i wanted to say is you know moses selected the leaders here and it's like he does he select the leaders they deserve um you know we we don't know if moses prayed about this and and yah guides his hand and selects these people I kind of think that yeah that makes sense that moses probably did pray and consult the father or he was guided to pick the people he picked. Yeah. It kind of ties into last week's portion yeah. uh, with the leaders they deserve um, mm-hmm. as the people go astray, you know, yeah, or as the leadership even goes astray and the people don't hold them accountable. It's still, mm-hmm. well, then that's what you get. So I do want to go back one. If I can figure out how to go back here, apparently I can't figure out how to do that, Jake. So can you do this? Oh, I thought I did that and didn't go back. So anyway, so he asked them very specifically these very specific things. He's he, he nowhere in here does he say, hey, I want your opinion. Do you think we can take the land? That's not here. I don't see that. So he wants the facts. He wants the data, you know, um, so. But but something so Jake, but I don't think we have to read this Matthew thirteen. People are f- pretty familiar with the parable of the sower. I think probably our audience is. So how could the people's heart be reflected in the parable of the sower? So yeah, I think uh, this kind of goes into what they're finding out in the testing, and they're finding that their heart is like the land that they are living in currently, and that it's uh, not the fertile soil that that Yeshua is talking about here. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the land is so infertile that he has to feed them. <laughs> right. So it's not abundant. It's clear. This land is not abundant with wild game and trees and water running, you know, multiple times he has to give them water. He's got to import and, the food. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. So, but, uh, but yeah, I think there's definitely a good comparison probably to the hard ground. So right. their hearts are like the hard ground in the parable of the sower. There's just no, there's just no chance for that seed uh, to take a, you know, to to get going. So, um, were they ready for the victory? I think uh, it bears out when they when they come back. Yeah, from the wilder, yeah. from the the promised land. Yeah. And I think that he wanted to see if these people had his heart, you know, if these people had gotten anything, like I've been with you for a year, surely a little bit rubbed off on you. Right. And this is, you know, part of the test is, are you going to have the faith that I can get you through a difficult situation? Cause your eyes are going to tell you something 
but you don't see you know the the flaming horses surrounding the enemy you Mm -hmm. know so uh are you going to trust in the one who brought you out of egypt or your own lion eyes basically yeah yeah so they surveyed the land and the people and he basically says tell me if they're strong they're weak they're few or many is the land good is it bad do they live in tents they live in fortified wall cities is the land fertile so these are like kind of yes and no kind of questions that had quantitative numbers yeah associated with them yeah and yah knows they're strong the land is good mm-hmm. they're living in fortified walls the land is fertile you know uh so he the knows odds are against them yeah. you know in, in in human perspective exactly so it's so it's kind of funny he's like maybe they're weak I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you go find out? Yeah, go check it out. <laughs> and there is a reason he calls them children of Israel. Cause I mean, this is kind of like what you might do with a child. Yeah. Go see what it's like. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yep. And I'll help you. So yeah, if you're a parent, learn some parenting advice That's from right. this. That's right. So Jake, did he just ask for facts? Do you think that's a safe assumption to say here? I think so. I think, uh, he just wants he just wants them to stick with the facts yeah. and uh, doesn't want their commentary and opinions. Yeah, yeah. And so when you break down, these are the guys. Hopefully, I spelled them all right. These are the people that went in as the spies. And when you break down the percentages of them, only sixteen point seven percent of all of them said, "Hey, we got this. Um, we can do this. No problem." Yeah. So that's Joshua and Caleb, and they're representing this remnant or narrow path of folks that, you know, uh, similarly when uh, the golden calf situation, and they're like, who's on Yahweh's side? And Mm -hmm. you have that remnant. It's the same kind of deal here. Yeah, yeah. And you think about 16.7%, that doesn't seem like a big number. Yeah. So... Yeah, if 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 you took a poll, mm-hmm. who is for yeah. name your name your uh, you know who's for ice cream? Yeah, and sixteen point seven percent said they were not. I wouldn't believe it. Right. So, <laughs> exactly. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but yeah, if sixteen point seven percent said something, you would not be very impressed and go, "Oh yeah, that's everybody." Yeah. So. We, we better uh, change the way the whole country is running because yes. 16.7% of Wait people said that something. That may be happening now. Wait. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Jake, how, were, how can you say they were blind and deaf to the truth and there was a famine of the word? Well, because uh, the word was Yah will... Uh, provide and Yah will protect us and Yah is our salvation. Um, And so that being the truth, they clearly didn't see that. They were blind and deaf to it. Um, And so that being the case, if they knew the word and they had it in their hearts, then they would be, then they would have been filled and ready to go, but they weren't, they were, there was a famine. So they may have been, hearing the word but they weren't listening to the mm-hmm. to the word if you will or, or they didn't believe that Yah was who he said he was yeah it's a it's a lack of faith for sure and giving in to the the fear of of the earthly the worldly yeah 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 that's well said so they were blind guides they had no vision and you know we do have the scripture without vision the people perish and so look that up. Um, but this lack of faith is a seed that grows to rebellion and see, you know, see Cora coming soon. So um, they definitely um, give their opinion and come back and are like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't, I don't know about this. And, and, and it's like a cancer that spreads in the camp and they, you know, does it say specifically it does the, the scripture does say it was an evil report yeah and so i don't think it's too crazy to assume that people talk because we talk today 
and they talked back then too right and uh it just it's like the uh the pillow of the bag of feathers you dump out in the wind and then try to go pick them up you run around saying a bunch of stuff and you can't get it back and do you do that a lot you go in the it, woods and dump a bunch of feathers out and try to go chase them i usually dump them in my compost but no. that's <laughs> sometimes the wind takes them away yeah mm-hmm. but uh yeah so when they're they come back and they don't know what they're doing they don't trust and they think oh everyone's got gonna gotta believe the way i believe Mm -hmm. and then they go tell everyone else hey uh i don't think we should be going in there and i think kind of the way it tells it is they're basically gossiping i think they start making stuff up about not being able to to go into the land and so and it may have gotten embellished and it may have gotten bigger than it actually was and in a way they turn on joshua and caleb this is a betrayal of them too because basically they're kind of saying that they're lying yeah in a, in a way so it's a false witness is what it is right and uh and so that is one reason why he gets so angry is because they're bearing false witness and he does not like that no and we know that because we studied the Torah and we know that he doesn't like the false witness. Right. And so I, I have to feel that Joshua and Caleb's felt somewhat betrayed by their own, you know, that, you know, you think about it, basically they went camping in a really nice place. They went to the Mediterranean <laughs> for a few days to go check it out basically. And so they probably went to the ocean, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, that, you know, why would you not? Uh, you know, it makes sense that they walked around and checked out, you know, the high parts, the low parts, the, you know, the wet parts, the dry parts, you know, they went every, you know, they checked out several things and it's not, um, I don't think it's a stretch to say they went to go see the view at the ocean. And I, I'm sure it, it had to be. That was part uh, of the, the, the test, right? Go check out the land. Is the yeah. land good or bad? Yeah. And you would assume that they went and when you do it, you know, when you go on a camping trip with your buddies, usually it's fun and enjoyable. And, you know, they probably had stories. I mean, you know, I think about today, if you did this, you would have stories with these guys about, hey, remember when we did that? We saw that you would talk about this. And so it is a betrayal to them because these are, you know, people they thought you know, or did this cool thing with. And yeah, now they get betrayed. It's it kind of gives you the idea of how you can all be looking at the same set yeah. of facts and come away with something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, the whole lying part thing, I hadn't thought about too much until this year. And it makes sense that, you know, this is a type of a false, false witness. Right. So Yah is angry. He's ready to divorce. Moses intercedes and turns back Yah's wrath. And, uh, but Joshua and Caleb, what does that mean, Jake, that Joshua and Caleb are punished with the rest of them? So Joshua and Caleb were righteous in their, their, uh, report back and, and their, uh, loyalty to Yah. And yet the whole group, uh, turned their back on Yah and now everybody has to wander the wilderness for 40 years not just the people that uh, committed the sin, Mm -hmm. but there's repercussions that affect those who didn't commit the sin. It's, it's kind of an, the idea of, well, why does bad stuff happen to good people? Well, this is some bad stuff happening to some good people right here because the rest of the people screwed it up for everybody basically. Yeah. 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 You know, you would like if you were writing this to have a happy ending, you would probably say and Joshua and Caleb and all their families got to go into the promised land. <laughs> right. And they stepped into the promised land. And they're like, hey, should have listened to us. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you don't see that. And it's because Joshua and Caleb also, I don't think they were that, that we wouldn't be reading about them in this context if they were like that. Right. So. They clearly were holy and set apart. And and I think they were humble like Moses, and I think it bothered them. You know, they, they had to be sad. Uh, they had to be sad about this situation that they came so close. Here they are. I mean, this is the goal, right? This is why we came across the desert. This was the promise. And here we are basically standing on the edge of it, and we mess up right at the last second. 
And so, you know, it's like, a, you know, the, the game is on the line and it's your opportunity to make that closing shot that's going to win the game for all time. And you just airball it <laughs> terribly for everyone. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, uh, uh, to here, kind of like we said earlier on the, the test that's happening because the, here Yahweh says, I'm going to strike them with pestilence and all this kind of stuff. And Moses is like, hang on, hang on. The Egyptians will hear about this and say, you brought us out to destroy us basically. And then Yahweh turns back his wrath. And so I, I think that's similarly testing Moses does Moses uh, have yeah. the people's best interest at heart? And then when, because you don't, we can say as much as we want, oh, this bad situation comes up. This is what I would have done. But you don't really know unless you're in the situation, mm -hmm. how you're going to react. So this gives Moses that opportunity to, this is how I'm, how he's reacting to people essentially you know spitting in his face and saying eh, what what you've done for us we don't care about that anymore we're going back to egypt yeah you know that kind of thing yeah yeah that's well said for sure all right and so we have another instance in 1529 of one torah one law see last week's portion where we also looked at galatians 328 mm -hmm. and jake the z Zitzi. How do how does how do we get the Zitzi after this? Yeah, there's kind of a pattern of uh so in the beginning, Yah says, Okay, uh love each other. And then the people uh, then people are slapping each other. It's like, well, no, 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 no. Uh this is how you love each other, right? And so he tells them, Don't be slapping each other, don't be taking stuff from each other, all that kind of stuff. And now they're like, Okay, well, we got all that. And then he's like, oh, also, you have to love me. And part of that is do what I say. Listen to what I'm saying. And in order to do that, you have to remember what it is I'm saying. So he g gives them the zitzi and says, now, when you look on this, remember what I said, because just, just counting on yourself to will it into, into my memory is not working. You know, you're not, you're not going to just try harder. It's not how it works. So you need some, some kind of thing to help you get through this. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. So, and it is good to be reminded that that's where it comes from. And, and uh, it reminds us today because unfortunately we're not that far removed from, from them and the, the dumb things that they did and it's easy to look at them just like you said i wouldn't do that i would never do that well we might <laughs> and we probably do we all know we fell short uh and um, don't do the things that we're supposed to from time to time and it, it is something uh in this fallen world but but um but the ZT is supposed to help us and go oh wait a minute maybe i uh, okay check myself yeah. So it's, yeah, I it's think a reminder. And and I think also to me, the testimony that really spoke to me because I used to not wear them. And uh, when, when I read this, every time it would kind of like tick in me a little bit like, hey, I'm supposed to do that maybe. But the story that that uh, convinced me was your story, Jake, of how you met some people in our group at a, at a playground or. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My wife mm -hmm. uh, was at the playground and uh a woman came up to her and said, Hey, I like your seats seats. And my wife's like, Oh, how do you know what those are? <laughs> you know, cause she that had never happened to her before. And so, uh, then they got to talking and, uh, now, uh, that lady joins us for fellowship and it's lovely. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so if you wear them, then you do look for other people and you notice that you notice when someone has the, um, you know, the mezuzah, uh, on the doorpost or, you know, you, you notice those things when you walk up to a house and it does become a conversation piece. And, um, I've definitely noticed that and had some pleasant, very pleasant conversations with some people, sometimes people of Jewish faith and tell them what I do. And they're pretty, 
pretty interested in like, oh, well, you know, they're surprised that I know the things and know the words <laughs> and that, you know, I'm familiar with it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you were talking about how, um, uh, about uh, belief and, and having a reminder and that kind of thing and how we, we have that same capacity to fall into disbelief as they had, you know, the, the, how would I act in that situation? Um, and it's very easy for us to look at them and say they had the pillar of fire, they had the parting of the Red Sea, and yet here they are still essentially denying him, right? Yeah. Um, and then we, we say, well, pff, I would never, you know, because, and we go, well, you know, we have the same, it, we don't, we don't have that pillar of fire. Well, you have Messiah. Even Peter had Messiah. He ate with Messiah. He lived with Messiah. You know, he watched the miracles of Messiah and yet still denied him three times. So, yeah. so to say that you wouldn't is way over your skis, I think. So, so I think we need to be careful about that. So put in the comments way over your skis and we know that you made it uh, 26 minutes into this. That's right. So way over your skis or put, put an icon of skis in there. There you go. So I've never skied. Oh, wow. But okay. I, I hear being over them is bad. <laughs> it is bad. You fall down. All right. So I think we've come to the end of send you or shellac shellac numbers 13 through 15. So we encourage you to join the millions of other people reading the Torah portion this week. And Jake, you got anything else? Yes. The, also the millions of people subscribing to our channel. That's right. So that's right. So that, uh, the number thing is just like, yeah, you don't clicking. all have, you don't all have to wait to subscribe at once, you know, but you could, that would be fine if everybody went one, two, three, subscribe. Right. As long as it's within the next five seconds, go. Yes. No. Anyway, share it with your friends. If you found something useful in this, uh, be sure to leave a little comment and uh, we'll be able to know that this is helping people. So That's right. That's right. Well, we appreciate your loyalty and checking us out. And this is Matt and Jake signing off.